Hey church family, Pastor Randy here. So I've been wanting to do a series for you uh, called The End is Near. The reason I want to do this is because uh, because of what's going on in our world today, as, as we see a lot of, there's a lot of challenging things happen and a lot of signs even happening in our world that ca are causing people to say, is the end near? Is the end of the world coming? Is Jesus going to return soon? And so I want to point us to scripture uh, so that we can be thinking about the things that God has given to us to know and to, uh, and to see in our world today so that we can continue to remind ourselves this is what Jesus has said. This is what God has given to us in his word so that we can be prepared for the end. No, I'm not going to give you the day or the hour because the Bible says that no man knows the day or the hour, but we do know the season. And so let's look into scripture and see what God has given us so that we can be prepared for the end. Our foundation scripture for this series is going to be Matthew chapter 24. Yes, we'll be in other scriptures as well. I'm not, uh, I'm not going weird on you. I'm just sticking to what God's word says. And, um, and so join me in this four-part series, The End is Near. So let me say a quick word of prayer for us and then we'll get started. Father, I thank you so much for who you are. I thank you for your word. And um, Holy Spirit of God, would you lead us and teach us? And help us to be prepared. Make us into the men and women of God that you desire us to be for these exciting and challenging times. Um, Lord, um, help us to be ready for the end. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so Matthew chapter 24. Uh, the disciples were asking Jesus um, when these things were going to be. Um, specifically as it related to Jesus telling them uh, in, in relation to the temples that um, not one stone would be left upon another. And, um, and so it says in verse 3 of Matthew chapter 24 that they were sitting on the Mount of Olives. They were sitting on the Mount of Olives. And uh, the disciple says, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming at the end of the age? And Jesus answered them, answer them, see that no one leads you astray. So he starts off answering them by saying, the disciples, disciples, see that no one leads you astray. Why, why did Jesus said that, say this? Well, because there were going to be people who would um, try to, or, or whether they're trying to or not, there would be people that would based on what they're saying, based on how they're acting, might uh, try to lead them astray, okay? Um, see that no one leads you astray. For many, Jesus says, will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ. Christ literally means Messiah. Christ is a title that means Messiah. Um, and he, he's telling his disciples in verse 5 here, many are going to come in my name saying, I am the Christ. So people are going to show up, um, whether it be uh, people you see or people you see on TV. Uh, notice I just fast forwarded to my time, to our time, um, by saying TV. But he was literally telling the disciples back then that people are going to show up saying that I am the Messiah. And they will lead many astray. Um, that's going to ha That has happened and is going to continue to happen in our day. People showing up and saying, I'm the Messiah, or I'm the Savior, I know the way, follow me, and they're going to lead people astray, okay? Verse 6, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Again, he's talking to his disciples, and he says, you're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. How many wars have there been since uh, Jesus' day when the disciples uh, were listening to Jesus? I don't know. But the answer is many. There's been many, lots and lots and lots of wars since then. And Jesus told them, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Uh, we, we continue to have wars in our day. We continue to have rumors of wars of our day. And Jesus says, see that you are not alarmed. See that you are not alarmed. For this must take place. But the end is not yet. Okay? He says, but the end is not yet. Verse 7. For nation will rise against nation. Hello. And kingdom against kingdom. 
and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginning of the birth pains. Okay? Nation will rise against nation. Have you seen that in your lifetime? Probably yes. Um, kingdom against kingdom. Have we seen that and are we seeing that? Yes. There will be famines. Are we seeing that in our world today? Yes. And earthquakes in various places. Are we seeing earthquakes in our world today? Yes. Every day, many, many earthquakes. And Jesus says this in verse 8. All these are but the beginning of the birth pains. Now, um, I have not given birth. Uh, my wife has. And I'm told that birth pains are not comfortable, okay? Um, but the beginning of the pains doesn't mean that the baby's here yet, but it's the beginning. And there's still a process to go through. There's still an amount of time to go through. And with every birth, it's di a different amount of time. But what we do know from the birth pains is it's coming. The baby's on its way, okay? And Jesus says of these things that this is the beginning of the birth pains. That doesn't tell us how long it's going to t the birthing process is going to take, but it does say it's the beginning, and and there is a birth going to happen. Okay, the beginning of the birth pains. Verse nine. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation. They will then they who's they well, then they will deliver you up to tribulation. Um, they who want to give you, deliver you up to tribulation, they who are not following Jesus, they who are of the world, um, will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death. Again, he's talking to his disciples when he says he, they're going to put you to death. Um, and so, so that has happened. That has happened since, since Jesus was here and left the earth. Uh, his disciples have been living and dying for him, for Jesus. And that continues in our day. There are many Christians around the world that are being persecuted for the name of Christ and people who die because they love Jesus. Okay? Um, they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Notice this doesn't say you'll be hated by all nations because of your political views. Um, no. Um, you, you <laughs> if you're being hated by people because of your political views, would you, uh, would you go back to scripture and, um, and, and understand that that's not, that's not okay. It's not okay to be hated by your political views. Um, Chances are that means that you are living wrongly and and being a bully and 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 hateful. Um, Jesus was not hateful. Jesus uh, was loving and firm on the truth because he was is the truth. Um, but he says you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake because of the name of Jesus. You would be hated by all nations. And then, verse 10, and then many will fall away. What, what is a cause of many who will fall away? Being hated for the name of Jesus. Not hated for politics. Not hated because of your skin color. Although that happens in our day. Hello. But hated because of the name of Jesus. And because people don't want to be hated... And because people don't want to be given up for death and be killed because of saying, I'm a Christian, I love and follow Jesus, people will fall away. It says, verse 10, and then many will fall away and betray one another. That sucks. Betray one another. Um, that gives us an indication of, of brother and sister in Christ, fellow Christian uh, Christians betraying one another. Because they don't want to, um, they don't want to stick up for the name of Jesus and be hated on or killed, and so they will betray one another and hate one another. It says, verse eleven, and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. Verse twelve, and because lawlessness will be increased, 
have you seen an increase in lawlessness? Um, I have. I have in my day seen an increase of lawlessness. In the last uh, seven months, I've seen an increase in lawlessness. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. Christians, how's your love? How are you making sure that your heart is growing in love for others? Uh, or is your heart wanting to harden and is it hardening towards people because of the lawlessness that is happening in our day? Lawlessness is no excuse to not love. Jesus, Jesus is the definition of love in lawlessness. It was not a lawful um, the, Jesus going to the cross was not lawful, and yet he loved. He loved and loved well. He, from the cross, while he is being crucified, asked the Father to forgive them, his betrayers, his murderers. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Talk about a loving position. <laughs> Asking the Father to forgive them as he's dying because of what they're doing to him. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Um, because uh, lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow, grow cold. You must work. You must work at loving people and making sure your heart is not hardened. Um, uh, by the way, the, we do that by keeping our eyes on Jesus. Okay? Okay. Verse 13. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Verse 14. And the gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Okay. So I want to share that with you to begin with. And then um, because we don't know. So Jesus just said. Jesus has just told us that that um, he, doesn't, he hasn't given us an answer on when the end is going to be. He's given us some signs of the beginning of birth pains, okay? But once again, we don't know how long the birth pains are going to last until the baby's born. What we do know is that the, there has been beginning of birth pains. So we, we can look from, we can see scripture and then we can look out in the world and say, okay, um, uh, it looks like the beginning of birth pains, okay? But that doesn't tell us how long the process is. It doesn't tell us how long the process is. So uh, what I would like to, I'd like to now take us over to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And uh, as you turn there, I know I can hear some people thinking or saying, yeah, but Randy, um, just because there's these bad things happening in the world, does it really mean it's the beginning of the birth pains? Because there's been bad things that have happened for centuries, uh, for centuries, decades and centuries. As, and I would say, you're right. I agree. I, I know there have been bad things happening. There's been earthquakes happening for centuries, right? Um, and yet we seem to see, we seem to see an increase when there's a pandemic happening in the world, when there's um, when there's the riots and protests, when there's uh, wildfires, when there's famines all over the world, when there's the amount of earth, earthquakes we have today, when there are historic, uh, peace agreements happening between, uh, um, well, for Israel, historic peace agreements for Israel. Um, I think we'd be fooling ourselves to say that the beginning of the birth pains are not happening, okay? I think we are definitely in, I think we're definitely in the birth pains, uh, but what we don't know is how long the birth pains are going to last, okay? So let me t take you to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we're going to end with this today. Paul says this, Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. So he's talking about the times and seasons of the end, 
okay? Because in chapter 4, he just got done talking about addressing um, the coming of the Lord. They were, uh, the Thessalonians were concerned that this has already, had already happened, and they missed, they missed the coming of the Lord, okay? Um, and so he's bringing them a message saying, okay, settle down, you haven't actually missed it, um, for these things, you know, uh, this is how it's going to happen. And then he says in chapter 5, verse 1, Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, very interesting. While people are saying there's peace and security, um, can you say historic peace agreement between the United States and Israel? Um can you, can you hear a, a, a soft chanting of, of people's slogan during COVID, uh, safe and healthy, healthy? I know that's not peace, and yet safe and healthy. If, you, if you're at peace, if you have shalom, you're safe and healthy. Um, and so, um, very interesting. While people are saying there's peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape verse four but you he's talking to the thessalonians christians he's talking to christians but you are not in darkness brothers for that day to surprise you like a thief for you are all children of light children of the day what did he just say those who are of the light those that are children of the day uh, this, these are n uh, other ways of saying Christians. Um, you will not be surprised about the day of the Lord. You are not going to be surprised. Why? Because God doesn't surprise his children when he's about to do something great that, um, uh, like showing up. <laughs> okay? God wants... God wants his people to be looking for him showing up, and therefore they'll see his showing up, okay? And it won't surprise them like a thief. So he says in verse 5, For you are, like, you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or the darkness. So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober for those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. So when he's talking about sleeping here, he's not actually not talking about sleeping, like going to falling asleep and, and, and uh, in your bed. Um, although he's using that language. He's using that picture language to give us an idea here of what he's wanting to say to us. Um, so he says, we're not of the night, and those who sleep, they sleep at night. Nor are we of the darkness. Those who get drunk, get drunk at night. So he's talking about, you know, those who do bad things, they do the, these things generally in the nighttime. Why? So that they're undercover, okay? Let us not sleep as others do. Let me read a little bit further and then we'll address that more. Verse 8, But since we belong to the day, again, we belong to the day, to the light, where things can be seen, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. So he says, let us not sleep. Let us keep awake and, and be sober. Don't sleep, but keep awake and be sober. What does that mean? Well, we've got to connect that with what he says in verse 8 of, let us be sober. sober. How do we be sober? Having put on the breastplate of faith and love. When we as Christians live out our faith, when we love others, which is a part of living out our faith, we, we love because we have faith in Jesus. When we are working, at, have, working out our faith by loving others, and we put on our helmet of the hope of salvation, um, a helmet covers our head, our brain, and in our brain, we know the truth and knowledge of God and the salvation which comes through Jesus Christ. And that gives us hope, a hope for a future with him, a hope of that he's coming to rescue us, right? 
So, so we actually stay awake and don't sleep by living out our faith and loving others and remembering the salvation that we have through Christ, which gives us hope. Okay? And so if this is not saying you have to stay awake and not sleep forever. No, you can sleep and sleep well because Jesus is our Savior. Okay? So when he's talking about sleeping and being sober, he's actually not talking about uh, sawing logs, but he's talking about don't let your, uh, your faith go to sleep. Don't let, but, but continue to be a man or woman of faith in Christ. That's the only way that you're going to be ready for the end. Continuing to be a man or woman in Christ by living out your faith in him, loving others, and remembering and dwelling on your salvation in Christ, which brings you hope. That's the only way to be ready for the end. Okay, verse 9 uh, and, and through 11, this is what we're going to end with. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. What are we supposed to do? Even in these hard times, and as we get closer to the end, um, what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to encourage one another to continue going after Christ. We're supposed to continue to build one another up, to continue building each other up in Christ by acting on our faith, loving each other, talking, thinking about the salvation that we have in Christ, which brings us great hope. And we need great hope in these days. And that is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I love you, church family. Uh, join me next time for part two of The End is Near.